In numerous and extremely important instances, I found that the Quranic version of the biblical events invariably contradict or are utterly different from their originals in the Bible. If Allah is the same God as the God of Israel and Jesus, how is it possible and logical that he could have revealed two or more irreconcilable and or dissimilar versions of the same events? Among all the chapters of this series, this is actually one of the most important questions, since it hits at the very foundations of who Allah actually is. It is common knowledge that the Almighty, by whatever name we may give him, has to be all-knowing and infallible. Blasphemously, the Quran proves that Allah is otherwise, uncertain, vacillating, and extremely fallible. Item 1. Let us start with the first verse allegedly revealed to Muhammad in Surah Al-Alaq, chapter 96, verse 1, about the creation of mankind. And it says, Proclaim, or read, in the name of thy Lord and cherisher who created, created man out of a mere clot of congealed blood. In Arabic it says, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق Well, anyone who has read the Bible would remember or know that of all of God's creations, Adam was formed from dust by the hand of God and then God breathed into its nostrils and made it alive. The Quranic version is utterly illogical and contradicts the biblical version. Item 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. And remember Abraham and Ismail raised the foundations of the house with this prayer. Our Lord, accept this service from us, for thou art the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Once more, it has to be pointed out that the Bible has no knowledge of a God called Allah, nor of a village called Mecca, or of a temple called Kaaba. Moreover, neither Abraham nor Ishmael ever set foot in Mecca or the Arabian Peninsula to build the foundations of a pagan temple called the Kaaba. Item 3, Al-Qassa, chapter 28, verse 48. Pharaoh said, O chiefs, no God do I know for you but myself. Therefore, O Haman, light me a kiln to bake bricks out of clay and build me a lofty palace that I may mount up to the God of Moses. But as far as I'm concerned, I think Moses is a liar. The name of Haman appears only in the Bible in the story of Esther in the years 400 B.C. in Persia, while Moses and the Exodus were in the year 1450 B.C. in Egypt. Pharaoh had no one called Haman as his prime minister. The Quranic version is once more in error, not only in location, but also in a time dislocation of 1,000 years. Item 4. Surat Maryam. Chapter 19, 23. And the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She cried in her anguish, Ah, would that I had died before this, would that I had been a thing forgotten and out of sight. This verse actually describes the birth of Jesus while Mary is alone and under a palm tree. Unfortunately for the Quran, the original story in the Gospels disagrees completely. It appears that the angel Gabriel, who had 610 years earlier revealed the birth of Jesus to Mary, had become so senile and stupid that he gave the wrong information to Muhammad. Chapter 19, verse 27. At length, she brought the babe to her people carrying him in her arms. They said, O Mary, truly an amazing thing hast thou brought. O sister of Aaron, thy father was not a man of evil, nor thy mother a woman unchaste. Wow! Mary is now the sister of Aaron and Moses of a 1450 years earlier period. This error is more understandable, since in the Quran, Mary's name in Arabic is rendered Maryam. Those who know the Bible would also know that the sister of Moses and Aaron is called Maryam. Hence, this explains Allah's very simple but understandable confusion. Item 5, Chapter and nisa 4. 157. That they said in boast, We killed Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for a surety they killed him not. 158. Nay, Allah raised him up 
unto himself and Allah is exalted in power wise. Once again, do the Gospels vehemently disagree with Allah and Gabriel's version of events. Most important of all, this single verse destroys the whole concept of Christian belief. Since without crucifixion, there is no death. Without death, there is no resurrection. And without death and resurrection, there is no Christianity. There are hundreds more of such differences between the Quran and the Bible. The, the listeners have very limited choices in trying to understand how this is possible, how the divine who allegedly revealed the Quran can be so wrong. In our opinion, the answer is very simple and goes like this. Since it is illogical to believe that any omniscient, merciful and compassionate God would have revealed all the discrepancies, hate-mongering, war-mongering, discrimination, grammatical errors, as well as the historical and character dislocations, mendacities, abnormalities, inconsistencies, time and space displacements that permeate the Quranic versions of the biblical events, then only one conclusion can be possible. That every letter, every word, every verse and every chapter in the Quran are the product of Muhammad's personal thoughts and imaginings. The secretions of his mind, based upon his distorted recollections of stories and tales he had heard in earlier times from Jewish and Christian individuals. They actually represent his own alter ego, cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme pagan rock god of Mecca, embedded into the corner wall of the Kaaba called the Black Stone. The authors of the Quran, Muhammad, Allah and Gabriel, are one and the same. They are all Muhammad himself, while Allah, Gabriel, and Satan are mere props required to give his alleged revelations sanctity and divine authority. After 13 years of preaching to a pagan Arab audience, consisting of illiterate, superstitious, unlearned, and gullible people, less than 100 people swallowed Muhammad's claims and posturing for prophethood. Muhammad was not even able to convince his own kith and kin of his claims as the messenger of Allah let alone the Jews and the Christians of Arabia. In the end, he had to use terror, bribery and slaughter to bring them all under his control and force them to believe in him. There is, in the final analysis, absolutely nothing divine about the Quran. And any follower of Muhammad, anywhere on this planet, who would attempt to challenge these statements and conclusions based entirely on the Muhammadan records themselves, will have the same probability of success as a snowflake in Muhammad's inferno.